Hello everyone. Once two friends met in the street. One said to the other, Hey friend, what happened to you? You look so sad and gloomy as if the whole world has caved in. The sad fellow said, You know, three weeks ago, my uncle died and he left me fifty thousand dollars. Two weeks ago, a cousin whom I never knew died and he left me one hundred thousand dollars. Last week, my grandfather passed away and I inherited almost a million. The friend said, Well, you are lucky to have such generous people in your life. But why are you still so glum and unhappy? The sad fellow replied, I am sad because this week is almost over and I have not received any money yet. Friends, the man was just waiting for someone else to die so he can inherit more wealth. Some of us are never satisfied with what we have. We always want something more. Some have all the material things life can bring and yet are not satisfied with that. Friends, in today's Gospel, Jesus warns us against all types of greed because greed leads to selfishness, envy, anger, hatred, dissension, violence and war and takes our focus away from God and away from serving and loving others. Friends, as Jesus was speaking to the crowd, a man asked Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to share the inheritance with me. Why did this man in the first place approach Jesus to settle a personal dispute with his brother? The text does not provide us with much detail except that the man wanted his share of the inheritance, but his brother would not give it to him. It is likely that the man took Jesus to be a rabbi, for the rabbis customarily interpreted Jewish law and settled disputes. Friends, according to the law of Moses, the firstborn son was entitled to receive a double portion of his father's inheritance, and the remainder was divided among other family members. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 21, we read something interesting about the rights of the firstborn son. It says that if a man has two wives, one loved and the other unloved, and both women bear him children, and the firstborn were sons, then the man must acknowledge the son of the unloved wife as the firstborn son and give him a double share of the property. So, more than likely, the man who approached Jesus was not the firstborn of the unloved wife, and wanting an equal share of the property, he wanted Jesus to get involved in his dispute. Jesus, however, declined to mediate in the dispute. Instead, he warned the man and others against all forms of greed. He said, Take care to guard against all greed, for though one may be rich, one's life does not consist of possessions. In other words, Jesus reminded them that life is much more than the abundance of possessions. And then in order to reinforce his warning against greed, Jesus told them a story of an unwise rich farmer. The farmer was materially blessed by God. His land produced a bountiful harvest. When he was blessed with a large harvest, instead of looking for ways to share his harvest with others or using it in a way that would benefit others on earth, he decided to tear down his bonds and build larger ones to store all his grains and produce for himself. He said to himself that he would rest, eat, drink and be merry. Friends, the farmer believed that with his wealth his future would be secure. But he did not know that he would die that very night and would never live to enjoy what he had saved for the future. Jesus then ended the story by saying, Thus will it be for all who store up treasures for themselves but are not rich in what matters to God. Friends, 
What lessons can we learn from this portion of the Gospel? 1. In the story, Jesus neither said that it is wrong to have things nor said that the rich farmer was a fool because he was rich. Jesus only pointed out that the man was a fool because he only cared about himself and thought that his possessions would last indefinitely. Friends, God gives different gifts or talents or possessions to different people. And he gives them to us not to keep or hold them for ourselves, but to use them to pursue God's purpose. That is, we are to use the surplus as God intends, to provide for others in need and further his kingdom. Today, let us take this opportunity to fill our hearts with gratitude and praise for the gift of grace given by God and be generous and share whatever extra we have with those in need and those who have less. 2. In the story, Jesus pointed out three simple truths. 1. Possession often arouses the desire for more. 2. Greed can make us self-centered and insensitive to people in need. 3. Greed can lead us away from God and others. Friends, let this story serve, us, serve as a gentle reminder for us to be content with our possessions. As the Bible says, if we have enough food and clothing, let us be content. Let us be on guard against greed, which leads us toward envy, selfishness, anger, hatred, meaninglessness, emptiness, competition, aggression and destruction. Instead. Let us set our hearts on God and the things of God which lead us to true happiness and peace. Amen. God bless you.